Welcome to A Flash of Beauty, the podcast, an audio experience dedicated to the further exploration of Bigfoot and the people Bigfoot has revealed itself to. What started as a documentary of personal narrative encounter stories and expert testimony has now shifted into a deeper inquiry into the forever changed lives of those that have witnessed firsthand this hidden truth. My name is Tobe Johnson co-producer of Flash of Beauty Bigfoot Revealed. Join me along with the crew and creators of this doc, director Brett Eichenberger, producer Jill Rimmon Snyder, and cinematographer Michael Ferry, as we go back into the trees to sit down once again with each guest in search of the truth, no matter how strange. Hey, this is Tobe Johnson of the documentary, A Flash of Beauty, Bigfoot Revealed. But we have something extended for you called A Flash of Beauty, the podcast. You're tuning into it, and we appreciate that. Along with me, well, we have the cast and crew coming to you. The director, Brett Eichenberger, the cinematographer, Michael Ferry, and the producer, Jill Remensnyder. There's a lot to be said about this documentary and my involvement with it, but I think I'll leave it up to these pros as well. Go ahead and say uh, hello, everybody. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Um, We have a lot planned for you. And what we're going to be doing on this podcast is expanding on the documentary. And we're going to go outside the bounds of the documentary. And we're going to get into um, some stories that you may not have heard, some behind-the-scenes stuff. and, you know, unfortunately, with a documentary is we only have a couple of hours, you know, 90 minutes to, to two hours to really get some stuff across. And so, you know, that's why we're coming out with a sequel. And so we're going to be talking about that. So I would encourage you to stick around and add this podcast to your list, because our goal here is to impart some insightful knowledge to vastly expand your Knowledge and understanding of the universe. I love it. That's that's good. I like that, Mike. It's uh, you don't you don't take part in a lot of podcasts that we've been doing over the last year promoting this film. I'm glad we have you here for this because, um, for anybody who's not seen this documentary, you owe it to yourself to see the hard work that's gone into this. But Mike, you uh, you know your uh, your lens was pointed in such a. a, a an amazing, curious direction, and um, it was such a phenomenal film uh, for a lot of reasons. But it's it's just an absolute beautiful spectacle, and um, you know you have a lot to uh, to share when it comes to this documentary. So um, tell people about yourself and to kind of introduce yourself to this world, because Brett and I've um, you know already kind of introduced ourselves to the internet. Hi, uh, my name's Mike Ferry. I'm the cinematographer on Flash of Beauty, Bigfoot Revealed. Um, gosh, I've been operating cameras and shooting pictures now for over 20 years. Um, and I've known Brett and Jill for almost all of that time. We've been working together for for ages. Um, and, um, you know, over the pandemic, we kind of work slowed down for us. Um, and we kind of wanted to take on a passion project. And something that we're all passionate about is, is, you know, the story of Bigfoot growing up in this part of the world, you really, um, you're really exposed to it. And you're, you're privy to a lot of stories and we wanted to get those stories on camera and um, really explore the subject um, visually, you know, we'll, we're going to be exploring the subject here, you know, audio wise, but we kind of wanted to get something out there um, in a feature documentary Um and you know it was it was something that we thought was gonna be short and sweet and something we'd have to show you know maybe six seven months down the road but um god the story is just <laughs> how many years later is it now just yeah yeah you just go down the rabbit hole and you just you want more and more and more and the more evidence you see the deeper you get it's just um 
it's fascinating. And I can't believe some of the interviews we got. Um, and especially for this podcast, you know, we're going to be elaborating on a lot of that and bringing in some new people. And um, yeah, we're just excited to see it, see it get off. All right. The producer, Jill Remensnyder, although um, she's lurking in the shadows here, I believe she's on the line. Are you with us, Jill? I'm right here. Let me, uh, you know what? I'll, I'm not going to turn my camera on. Okay. No. You did, yeah, that's all right. You don't have to. You can be shy in that way. Hey, um, Jill, this was kind of your brainchild, right? I mean, did you not, you came up with the idea that during the pandemic, you guys should be looking into the subject matter of Sasquatch? Well, it was the perfect time. I mean, like Mike said, uh, work slowed down, came to a screeching halt, actually. And what I can't, I can't think of a better, a better time to, uh, to go down a rabbit hole. And, uh, you know, like they said, we thought this was going to be just a quick, fun way to pass, you know, maybe a couple months of summer, Mm -hmm. wrap it up and get it out. But, you know, each interview was, uh, was leaving breadcrumbs and leading us uh, to the next interview and down the rabbit hole we mm-hmm. went and we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. And I mean that in the best way possible. Um, so, so yeah, um, I, I'm not, I can't quite recall how it all came together at this moment, but uh, it just, everything just fell into place uh, accordingly. And um, you know, with like what Brett said, uh, we have so much stuff and that's why we have to do a sequel because we couldn't fit all of that content into one documentary. And also, uh, with the podcast that kind of fills in some blanks and can, we can do some follow up with people we interviewed, um, Mm -hmm. because there's a lot, there's a lot that's happened over the last few years. And it'd be really great just to check in and see, uh, see what's new in uh, the lives of some of these investigators and researchers and uh, see if uh, see if their perspective has changed at all. Because I know for me personally, uh, as we got into this and got deeper and deeper into uh, this mystery, it's completely opened up my eyes and my world to, to things that I did not think I'd be chasing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um... You know, one of the things that uh, we struggled with with doing this podcast is how to bring it to you because we know that, you know, there's an overflooded market right now and there's a lot of Bigfoot podcasts that you could be listening to. So why listen to it one more? Um, and I think I have a, a good enough reason um, myself is that, you know, the human story of Sasquatch is a very interesting one, just as much as it is the Bigfoot story. And, um, you know, when you go to conferences and you hang out with other Sasquatch researchers or witnesses, that's all you're going to get. You're not going to, unless you go out for a night investigation and hang out in the woods and go to a habituator's property, you're probably not going to have activity. But yet um, the personal narrative story of how these witnesses have been changed and transformed as something myself, I feel like it really proves to the skeptic um, how powerful this is because they can't all be crazy. And so when I saw that you three were interested in that story, um, you know, I was headlong into my friendship and, uh, our, my own personal story in Cottage Grove, Oregon, a place that we called the Al Moon Lab, which is featured along with a lot of other tremendous stories in here. But we really didn't know each other. We didn't know where this would go. We just knew that, uh, and I'm speaking of Daryl and I, is that we trusted your motives And I think that's why we're going to be successful with this podcast is that everyone that you interviewed wants more. That's a good sign because they don't have to give you any more. They did their interview with you. But the reason that they want more is because you did such a damn good job on this documentary. And so um, I'm excited for the fact that we're going to be able to sit down and, um, you know, this – 
I've done podcasts before, but I've never sat down with three other people and done one. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge on my end to find out how to do this. And I'm not partial. Like, you know, I have my own point of view on what the heck I think is going on with this phenomena. And I I won't pretend that I don't. And we're going to have some people on this podcast that don't share that point of view that I've had some differences with. But I think the the subject matter alone is so fascinating that we can bypass all that BS and go right back to where the magic is. So um, that's my soapbox for this. And I'm excited to to lean in on this and, and to have Mike uh, finally involved with a, you know, an interview and a, a podcast here. So can you be a part of this in any way, shape or form down the road, Mike? Absolutely. Periodically. Okay. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. no, I'd love to. Just um, let me yeah. know how I can help and when you need me, okay. and I'll be there. Yeah. All right. Um, any comments here or any statements from your, your end? Because I could go on and on about um, where I want to take this podcast and, and whatnot. We just want to – I think it's important that, that we hear from you, the audience. You know, And that's a big thing for us as we've made the documentary and we've been able to get – um, commentary back, you know, and some of it's good and some of it's bad and Mm -hmm. some of it's lukewarm and that's okay. And that's totally fine. And and we don't want to do anything here other than bring people together, share ideas, combine Mm -hmm. our ideas, listen to other theories, because I think that's important. I think it's important. It's that we don't want divisions. We want to work together in order to kind of figure out this mystery. We're not going to solve it overnight. We're not going to solve it in a hundred years. And frankly, Mm -hmm. if Bigfoot is, is is revealed tomorrow in Madison Square Garden in New York City and unveiled, we're still going to have hundreds of years of stories left to tell and to figure out. And if Bigfoot's discovered tomorrow, the mystery may begin again. And so these are the important things to keep in mind as we travel through this mysterious universe. Mm -hmm. We are all curious. We um, are all alike in our fascination of the unknown and of the paranormal, if you will, and undiscovered science and what lurks in the shadows. And so come come with us and let's all work together to try and make some sense out of all of this. I mean, the guests that we have here, I, I don't have all 40, some of them written down, um, but we should talk about some of these guests here that we haven't even spoken to yet. We've spoken to a handful so far, but, um, you know, my work as a producer is totally cut out for me as far as uh, logistics wise. But I feel like the heavy lifting has already been done by you. And uh, so for me, I can just kind of sit back and say, you know, uh, you know, these are l- largely in part going to be about 60 minutes long. These aren't going to be huge deep dives, but they're leading to a direction here, especially this summer here with the likes of part two coming out. Um, Let's talk a little bit about um, at least two or three of these um, witnesses in the documentary. Um, In particular, Doug Meacham. Um, You know, I've never met Doug. Doug's been on the periphery of this phenomena, but, um, Jill or Brett or Mike, uh, who wants this to describe uh, who Doug Meacham is and and what his uh, role is in the doc? Go ahead, Brett. I was waiting for you, Jill. <laughs> well, I could take it if you guys want. Um, no, I mean, Doug, I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, go Well, all right. Well, we'll all kind of chime in on Doug. And I think Mike can even chime in on Doug because – the, the three of us went and we met Doug and we weren't quite sure what to expect other than our, our, you know, conversations with him prior to going to his, his clinic were very favorable. And Doug just seemed like he had a lot of energy and excitement for, for what we were about to do with the interview. But I, you know, Doug's interview was one of those interviews that I, I feel like the three of us left and the, and the four of us in total, including Doug left after that interview, just kind of buzzing because of Doug's understanding of this phenomenon or his, his attempt. I mean, nobody really understands the phenomenon. I, I don't think, but I think Doug's attempts to understand the phenomenon through some of the folks that have come into his office and some of the people that he's spoken to um, is very insightful, you know, and, and, and what we hope to accomplish through Doug is kind of getting an idea from him. It's 
who are these things? Who are these beings? And what is the character of these beings? Um, mm-hmm. You know, and that's part of, of the theme of a flashy beauty is that this, these aren't monsters. You know, these are a type of people. These are a type of, mm-hmm. again, type of beings that we're trying to decode. And, and Doug really, I felt, played an integral part in the documentary of, of, of taking us there, bringing us there, of kind of not, not even selling, but just kind of inviting us into this world of where, you know, um, and reinforcing the title, A Flash of Beauty, that these things can be a once-in-a-lifetime sighting that does become a, a somewhat flash of beauty or a flash of beauty to, to whomever sees them or encounters them. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I got a black helicopter buzzing over my roof here. I don't know if yeah. you heard that. Um, they're they're hearing that all the time. They're listening to the podcast. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> but he, yeah, was, that... he was just so he was so good with like just exploring the mechanics of the subconscious and how that mm-hmm. really diving into somebody's brain, you know, the experiencer's mm-hmm. brain, and really getting in there and kind of moving things around and dissecting and um, going in there with a, you know, with a, with a telescope mm-hmm. and kind of getting to the, to the real heart of it and why and how, and how it mm-hmm. leads you. I mean, um, yeah, Brett, you're right. Some of the stories he told were just beautiful. And I mean, it just, it just complemented all of our stories so well. It just gave a legitimacy to all of it. Yeah. Yeah, and Mike and, and Mike brings up a great point, and that's one of the things that we feel has separated us from some of the other um, documentaries that are out there that we were all fans of. We just felt that there was a voice missing, and that voice was a psychological voice. That voice was a mechanics of the brain voice because of the way that these things, these encounters, change you. And the four of us have all had things happen to us that we can't explain, and we know what it feels like to not be able to make sense of something in a world that's supposed to make sense. And so this is important and it's critical. I think as the podcast continues that we keep talking about this stuff, we keep talking about the aftermath and, um, and why we have um, these thoughts and feelings and these PTSDs and whether that's even legitimate, whether we should have, whether we should be afraid, you know, is, is this something to fear Um, or is this something that is like a solar eclipse that that is beautiful and hard to understand and you know especially for millennia you know people worshipped these things because they mm-hmm. didn't understand it Where, are we in the same circumstance right now at this point in our civilization you know so this is all part of the decoding and part of that decoding lives up here it lives in the in the mental well being was it uh, Doug that brought up the term hidden event was it was he the guest? In no, Who that's that coming up? up in our sequel. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. That's Simeon Hine. And okay. um, a hidden event is a sociological uh, phenomenon where there's something happening throughout society that's not being acknowledged publicly, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, and Bigfoot, I think, I, you know, what's really interesting to, to us is that Bigfoot is certainly a hidden event in that Tens of thousands of people, maybe even more, maybe hundreds of thousands of people have seen these beings um, more so than some of the other, you know, wild animals out in nature. More so than maybe mountain lions and and other elusive beasts, wolverines, you know. Um, but nobody's talking about it because they're afraid of the stigma and the taboo. And so we will be talking about a hidden event, and I hope that, you know, We'll be able to get, and I know we'll be able to get Simeon on the on the um, podcast, and we'll be able to kind of deep dive into what that means and um, what some hidden events have been in the past that are now at the full front, you know, in society. People are actually mm-hmm. talking about them, you know, things that w- wouldn't be spoken about in the 1950s and 60s because mm-hmm. of the taboo nature. And, you know, UFOs are now something that, that was a hidden event and that people would be talking privately between themselves about mm-hmm. the thing they saw in the sky, pilots, for instance, and now they're being encouraged to talk about those things. It's become the norm in society, and Bigfoot is right behind UFOs as far as we're concerned, and we want to keep pushing that agenda. Mm-hmm. Also in the documentary are uh, two voices I'd never heard of. A lot of these people in the documentary none of us have met. 
Um, in particular, I'd love to meet these two, Chad and Austin, and the lake bed sighting. Um, talk to me about uh, that experience, Jill, meeting them, and um, tell people more. Well, that was, uh, you know, that's just an example an example of things falling into place. Uh, I, I think it was Brett just happened to be on some uh, Facebook uh, Bigfoot page and Chad had gone on and said, hey, we just had a sighting. We can't make sense of this. We need to talk about it. And Brett was able to make contact with them and started the conversation. It was a, it was a fresh sighting. They still were kind of processing and trying to make sense of it. And uh, what was so unique and special and important about about their uh, experience is that they were together. So there was a witness and there, were, you know, we were just talking about Doug Meacham and the psychological uh, component. They were kind of each other's support group as they're trying to get through this um, because it really did rattle them. Uh, they didn't give Bigfoot any, you know, much thought prior to this, and uh, meeting them and hearing them recount their story, you could see it on their face. I mean, you really, you, you could understand uh, their fear, but also the awe and the wonder, and um, it's just really interesting, um, and especially. Uh, there was a second part where we actually went up to the lake where they had the sighting. It was the first time they'd been up there. Uh, they'd been back since the original sighting. And it was really having an effect on them. It really was. And if you've watched the documentary, you know, hopefully we captured that mm -hmm. in a way that shows. Oh, yeah, and, and Absolutely. And just to add to that, I think that like Chad and Austin are the definition of earnest, those two guys. And, and, and I think that, um, you know, when I first talked to Chad on the phone, I thought I was like, man, we have to get these two guys because, it, you know, they are so convincing in, in what they saw. They're so genuine and so convincing. And the fact that they saw it as long as they saw it, you know, this, this wasn't um, the typical flash of beauty, if you will. This was a long pretty drawn out. There's two of them, you know, there's an adult and a juvenile. And, and so I think even as history kind of goes on, people are going to be talking about Chad and, and Austin sighting for a long time because it was very poignant. We saw, we saw a, a parent protecting a child. And so we saw that humanity again, that we've been looking for that character. But also, also to add on that, what we didn't get into just because we didn't have enough time and what I really want to get into on the podcast when we talk to them is what happened after their sighting because we talk about how uh, they left in the middle of the night and how uh, Chad's wife had to pick them up but there is quite the story that got them from point A to point B um, that happened that night they tried to camp and uh, make it through the night and it they were chased out and their story about how they got down the mountain and when they showed us uh, how they made it down, it, it just, it makes your brain just melt. It's crazy. I had never, <laughs> I'd never even heard this before. I yeah. mean, I, you guys have so much information and, you know, overloading your brain. Yeah. Um, that's incredible. What were you saying, Mike? No, I was just going to say, I mean, it was not an easy spot to get to i mean and of course if you've got a ton of camping gear we had a ton of uh camera equipment and audio gear and um it was a pain in the ass trying to get up to that lake and then having to truck down the side of a mountain just to get down and get to safety it was i mean i can't imagine how terrifying that would be you know in the middle of two o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning and you know one thing that stuck with me about their story is you know how it's how this experience has stuck with them and how they've kind of helped each other through it, you know, with them calling each other and being like, you know, two or three months later, Hey, get on the line. This happened, right? Like, yeah, yeah, it did happen. You know, just getting that, mm -hmm. that, um, 
that feedback from each other and, and helping each other through the process is what stuck with me. Yeah, they were they were winners of the paranormal lottery. Those guys, in a lot of ways, if you if you want to call it the paranormal lottery, and 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 it's it was both a blessing and a curse for them, you know. And, and Chad and and Austin are very clear about how they feel privileged because they've seen something that very few people have seen. And th- and there's a lot of Bigfoot sightings out there too that that people see these things and before they register what it is, it's gone. They don't have enough time to observe it and really kind of study it. And Chad and Austin got that, you know. So they're up to the upper echelon of Class A plus sighting, you know, where they really got to see it. They got to observe it. And they got to observe its behavior because, again, a lot of sightings are, you know, it's crossing the road. You know, it's not doing the kinds of behaviors that Chad and Austin got to witness. And so that really made it unique and special as far as that goes. You know, through the doc, there's these lesser known voices here that we're going to take a deeper dive with. Um, I'm trying not to use the term rabbit hole as much as possible because <laughs> I, I, my temptation is to use only that f- phrase discussing discussing a Sasquatch. So we're taking a deeper dive here in this podcast. And some of these voices, like I said, are lesser known, which I think is the way that uh, you got to do this moving forward because – um, there's, there's voices out there regarding Sasquatch and their encounters that, um, you're going to be hearing from later. Now, these people aren't on the Sasquatch conference circuit. They're, they're not doing podcast. They're just kind of like hanging out on the edges of, you know, the, not society, but of definitely this Bigfoot conversation. And we're trying to say, it's okay. You can come a little bit closer and come a little bit closer. So, I'll try not to be too heavy-handed with the the newer witnesses here because I can be a little bit overwhelming. I get that. But we do have people that have gone totally down into the rabbit hole completely, including Ron Moorhead, you know, and Arla Williams. But when I found out that you had Peter Byrne in this documentary, I imagine that it would probably be – um, a short interview, maybe on his front patio, or maybe like at a rest stop. Um, but here again, since you you did well by Ron Moorhead and you did well by Todd Neese, all these you know permission slips got you to a pub, I believe, with Peter Byrne in Pacific City, um, which is amazing footage to watch because that's one person I haven't met yet. I, I'm totally stoked that we can get Peter Byrne on a podcast, possibly with your help, and um, take a deeper dive. And that one might have to go over sixty minutes for me. But um, who yeah. wants to take that up? Because that's such a cool thing for me to think of. I'm sure you guys are happy you got that interview. Overjoyed, yeah. And I, I'm going to defer to Mike because that was the first time Mike had ever met Peter. Jill and I had had spent some time with Peter prior to that almost 10 years ago, but I'd love to hear Mike's thought as you first met Peter and what his impression of him was. Yeah. You know, the first time I met Peter, you could, you know, you could tell he, he had something to say, you know, he, you could, you could really feel, see everything, you know, you could see all those, all those old expeditions. And, you know, before he even started talking, I mean, you could, Mm -hmm. You could just see the experience on his face and the stories that that were down in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just it was like it was like sitting down talking to Indiana Jones. Really, it was like it was crazy. He just had so much to say and has seen this world since you know day one. Really, since you know since the Gimlin Patterson film, and you know it's um he's just got. He's got way more to say than than what he had in our documentary, so I cannot wait for him to get on this podcast and and um and have him pick it apart for more. I mean, we're yeah. we're talking about someone who's not only um, trekked the Himalayas looking for the Yeti, but hung out with the likes of Jimmy Stewart and possibly smuggled out a 
uh, a, we'll just say a biological in a very curious way to the USA. I mean, these are these are awesome podcast stories that I don't want to edit a single word of. And did he get into any of the Jimmy Stewart stuff with you? I'm pretty sure he did. Okay. Did he? Just did like, he tell us? I can't, I can't recall. Very. He just kind of briefly went over it. It wasn't anything in depth. I mean, he didn't. Okay. I mean, I, that, but that's the potential here is that we can get into that yeah. territory. And I've never had a chance to. I mean, I don't know how to broach all of that, but, uh, you know, it's, um, it's just a major get. Um, yeah. But he's the, he's the type of guy that you would just want to, you know, meet at the pub and go have a pint and just talk, you know? Yeah. There was nothing. Mm -hmm. Fascinating man. The guy had, <clears throat> had an air about him and, a, you know, and you could, you could tell he's seen some stuff, but there wasn't any, you know, he was approachable as anybody, you mm -hmm. know, it was, it was just, you know, talking story with him and, and hearing what I he mean, had and to say. You, you could yeah. say this about anybody, but if, you know, if, if cloning were coming along and stem cell research was where it is maybe 30 years from now, you know, cloning a Peter Byrne or filling him full of stem cells to get him back on those Himalayas, I mean, you just get the the persona of of that guy is just an amazing persona for this community. And it would be a sad loss to never have a Peter Byrne in this, uh, in this community. But, um, since he's not going to the conference circuit, you're going to have to settle for a podcast. So those are the kind of things that we have coming up. Um, you can tell I'm excited about, uh, about doing this. Um, you know, we have some stuff coming your way, stuff that we haven't even talked about really ever with anybody as far as projects are concerned. But where there is a major thing coming up this summer, and you can be a part of it too, um, you know, this podcast will be uh, along its way by Memorial Day weekend 2023. But if you want to put a fork in it, you can do it in Forks, Washington. Uh, go to SasquatchTheLegend.com. And I urge you to do it because not only are we going to have great guests there like uh, Doug Hycheck, the creator of Monster Quest, and Tom Powell, uh, you know, a, a staple. Uh, if you've never seen Tom Powell give a lecture, you've missed out as far as Sasquatch lectures are concerned. He's got a new book coming out. But there's going to be a screening. We're going to call it a screening, right? We're calling this a Flash of Beauty screening. Is it a it's premiere? Are we calling it a screening? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna call it a, a, a world exclusive premiere or okay. a world premiere. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Exclusive so if you're in, premiere. If you're in Forks, you're gonna be the first person to see it in public. See. Well, mm -hmm. now what are they gonna see? What What are we talking about? Tell them what the name of it is. Tell them what's going on. Jill. Oh, that's my <laughs> Take it away. Okay. Well, RC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <our> <laughs> is, uh, a flash of beauty paranormal bigfoot um we pick up where a lot of the interviews <clears throat> left off as far as other experiences and events that seem to seem to come along with the bigfoot sighting or um the experience, whether that was something extraterrestrial, uh, something of the paranormal realm, uh, orbs, uh, uh, mind speak, the telepathy, just there's this whole, there's just like this whole cornucopia of things that isn't being talked about um, in the general uh, Bigfoot conversation. And not only do we talk about it, but we talked to some scientists and um, people with some pretty uh, interesting ideas on what's happening and why and how Bigfoot is able to, how, how he is, how they are able to uh, use mm -hmm. these abilities. You are not going to want to miss this. And this is, I can't even begin to tell you how uh, new and strange and wonderful the sequel is going to be just you wait because nobody has heard these stories and we have one guest group of guests that has told us specifically that we are the only interview they will ever give 
So I encourage you to check it out and stay tuned. That's going to be in Forks, Washington, Memorial Day weekend, Friday of Memorial Day weekend, to be precise, sometime in the evening. You can check out the schedule uh, at SasquatchTheLegend.com. It is limited seating, and uh, meals are included with this. It's three days of um, Bigfoot Olympics, and there's going to be some fireworks because I'm going to be hosting it myself with uh, my co-host, Nancy Fry, um, and we decided we put on a debate so we can have this conversation about the flesh and blood, and we can have this conversation about the other or this, um, you know, uh, hitchhiker effect that seems to follow the Bigfoot phenomena. And um, that's going to be, I believe, on Sunday, um, two days after the premiere. So you're going to want to stick around. You can get the full schedule over at SasquatchTheLegend.com. Um, that is going to be a debate between uh, Thomas Seawood, indigenous uh, Native American from Canada. And um, he has a pretty strong point of view about the flesh and blood. Some might say he has the most <laughs> strongest point of view about Sasquatch. But he's going to be debating his own <laughs> compadre, and that is going to be um, Rich Germo, who has a very decisive view about what's happening. So I'm very partial about what I think is happening here. So uh, Nancy Fry is um, very impartial about what's happening. So between the two of us here, I believe we can moderate this fairly Um I'm mentioning this here a little bit longer than um, uh, I have before because I think it's going to be an important thing to show that we can do because this is what the documentary is doing. This is what these guests are going to be doing is we're going to have these conversations about these really fun topics that may go off the rails, may be fringe, and we don't know exactly where we're going. We just know that somehow, some way, fate has brought us all together together. The technology is uh, ripe, so we can do it. Um, maybe it won't always be a video conference. We might have somebody call in on a Campbell soup can. I don't know, but we're going to try to get the quality there. We just don't know how it's going to be delivered. And if if we're going to be talking about the stranger stuff beyond the Bigfoot, we may have some weird glitches happen along the way. I already had the black helicopter. Um, so, um, you know, just prepare yourself. Um This is going to be coming out uh, every Monday, starting um, the first part of uh, February, I believe you're hearing this. So just hit the little uh, subscribe and notification thing. That'll let us know that you're listening. Hey, if you have some advice for us, um, you know, you can get a hold of us directly in the comment section of the podcast. It should be streaming everywhere, including YouTube, to give you that ability to do that. But if they can't do that or they won't do that, how do they get a hold of you three as a team? The best way to get a hold of us is through info at bigfootdoc.com and or find us on Facebook, uh, Flash of Beauty Bigfoot Revealed on Facebook. And um, we try and get back to everybody that, that sends us a message. We want to hear your thoughts. All right. And if you have a Bigfoot story and you have a hidden event, think of um, getting a hold of them as well. Um, I'm sure they'd love to hear your story. Local out of uh, Portland, Oregon area. So uh, if you're in that direction and you have a Sasquatch story, you wouldn't mind if somebody gets a hold of you, would you? No, not at all. And if you are Sasquatch, we wouldn't mind if you get a hold of us. We would really like to talk to you. So if you're listening, you guys, throw some bone. Oh, they're listening. They are listening. They're definitely listening. I think they are. I think so. (laughs) All right, A Flash of Beauty, the podcast, every Monday. Thanks again for joining me, guys. Thank you, Tub. Thanks, Thanks Tub. Tub.